Yeah, that's to the question. Now we call for worship. Our land is alive with the glory of God. Desert sands hum and gum trees dance. Brown grasses sing. And mountains breathe their stillness. All created things add their rhythms of thought. And even stones rock out their praise. Let our voices mingle with those of the earth. May our hearts join the beat of her joy. For our triune God is with us. The source of all being surrounds and upholds us. As Jesus walks beside us and before us, the Spirit moves within and between us. Blessed be God, our wonder and delight. Today, as we gather to worship, we acknowledge the Gubby Gubby peoples, the first inhabitants of this place from time beyond remembering. We acknowledge that through this land, God nurtured and sustained the first peoples of this country, the Aboriginal and Islander peoples. We honour them for their custodianship of the land on which we gather today. We acknowledge that the First Peoples had already encountered the Creator God before the arrival of the colonizers. The Spirit was already in the land, revealing God to the people through law, custom and ceremony. We acknowledge that the same love and grace that was finally and fully revealed in Jesus Christ sustained the First Peoples and gave them particular insights into God's ways. And so we rejoice in the reconciling purposes of God found in the good news about Jesus Christ. Well, please be upstanding as we, uh, we sing our first song, Where Wide Sky Rolls Down. Today we mark and lament the truth of our shared history 
and we lift up to God our prayers for First Peoples and our nation. We say sorry and we pray for forgiveness, healing and hope. But today is also a day of worship. So we come together and give thanks to God for the abundant grace and liberating hope which we know through Jesus Christ and which is for all people. The God of all justice, the God of all peace be with you all. And also with you. Abba Father, Barpa God, source of all life, answer our call as a mother responds to the cry of a child in the night. Jesus Christ, brother and friend, liberator, stand beside us as bearer of our humanity and sharer of God's grace. Creator spirit, giver of new life, purposeful guest, Call us to praise, calling us to be a people of hope and faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now we have some photos. Um, so I think, uh, Neil, you took with Jenny from Murdering Creek. So we just watch that in silence. That's the mouth of the creek. And that is where it flows into Lake Wyber. Okay, I'd like to call Sam Jones up uh, to tell us a bit more about the Murdering Creek Massacre and also to explain his painting. Pela Wormi Yama Jingiri Wale Walu Galangurunda. That's the uh, hello in my languages, the languages of my heritage, which go from the central desert to Sydney, Jarvis Bay, Golden, northern New South Wales, Bunjalung Tweed Heads, out to Gamilaroi, to um, Tamworth that sort of country, up into Brisbane, Bay Islands, Torball and Undumbi, a bit of the Sunshine Coast, Cool. That's uh, my heritage in this language group here, in the Kabi language group, and the um, Darling Burra people. They say, Warum, and they say, Wanya Narum Naranji. And that means, g'day, hello, everybody, and all the rest. Um, the people of Noosa, or Noosa Thin, as the Darling Burra called it, meant a uh, place of shadowy trees. Tawantan here was Tawantathan, place of dead trees. Dunan or Dunathan was place of leaves, and then Dunathan over on Dunathan Rock is place of floating trees. So a lot of the language words around this area had to do with trees, which you see a lot of trees and in the Wyber um, PowerPoint we had there. So that's a little bit about the uh, history of the area. Kabi Kabi and their connection as a fishing ground to Noosa, they would call Noosa Wantima, which meant rising, referring to the big rising head over there of the Noosa Lookout. So there's a bit of connection to that. Also I'd like to pay more respects to some of those families, um, like the Browns and the Muckins and the Chilis and other local families in the area. 
Um, yeah, so I'm going to share a little bit about the Murdering Creek painting here with you today. Just at the top here, I'd like to make a very progressive thank you for something you have in your PowerPoint, and it's very awesome that the UCA do that in Oniton Church mm. straight. Is when you say there that you recognised we had um, a creator and our belief in our creator and um, through ceremony and custom and law. And I just want to share a little... Often, often when you say dream time, the first thing that usually comes to your head is rainbow serpent. It wasn't actually a big thing worshipped on the east coast here. In southeast Queensland, in particular in northern New South Wales, we worship Wyami and we call it Papa Wyami, which indicates a connection between Aboriginal and Hebrew Arabic. And um, my heritage is I'm a European Jewish Aboriginal, so I look very different to John. A lot of our families in the area they married South Sea Islanders from John's country, so they were able to keep their colour. Unfortunately, we were we, we mixed with Europeans, so we could hide and stay in the country. But <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> The story about that creator, I just wanted to, it's in this painting here. And we have this story where Bayami breathed on the ground and he made the first man and woman. And he cried because he needed a way to bring his children back because they fell away through it, from him. So he put the sun and cross in the sky so his children would come back through his son. So we had that story here. And um, there's not a lot of difference between that southern cross and that cross up there. And it's a... It's a, for me, it's a strong sharing and a reconciliation, bringing us back through the cross, through the yeah. Saviour. So I just want to share that with you. Yeah, so this painting here, um, wow. This is a long, long time working with Heather and Bueller and reconciliation. Um, grew, up, grew up listening to this story. I'm not heritage to the Coolum region, so we would hear oral versions of that story from the south of Students Creek. Um, some very sad stories. Um, if you'd like to acknowledge people like Pat for writing a story too, which you're going to share later, um, it ties in with those stories we grew up in the era hearing about this. People asking questions. Some of you might even be here today. What does Murdering Creek Road? Question mark. What is it? What, you know, why is there a road called Murdering Creek Road? There's not a lot of information. Um, I'll share it in the song. Um, only very small bits and pieces of things that people have pieced together, a few records and archival reports and different things. Um, the gist of the story here is, here we have Dullingborough on the Wyber Noosa section of the Yandina Creek Station. Um, they're here and they're spearing cattle. It was an easy feed, you know, it was different. It was slower than a kangaroo, you didn't have to burn it out. It was an easy feed. So here he is getting ready to hunt the kangaroo, which gave an excuse for, we would, we would call it a hit today. Um, Chippendale organised eight hired men there, eight hired guns standing at the front of Andina Creek Station. They got together. They went down to the river. One went out into the middle like a decoy. Now the river, now uh, Neil liked this story the other day. The river, if you probably stand here, sometimes and his grandson and my son go to school together. And sometimes you can stand up at the school where Lake Doon and Ella is, which is just over here. And the pelicans will actually fly out and they will fly overhead and they will land into Doon and into Lake Wyber and others. And you'll see them flying straight over. It's a quite a, so it's kind of that way as the pelican flies, we say. So here he stood as a decoy in the river, gets to about that deep. Maybe head on when you're really in the middle. He's out in the middle there and he's waving away and people come in to see what's going on. And then a very sad story takes place. The hired guns come in and a whole... There's, there's some oral stories that say a whole tribe is wiped out in a day. Um, we move on to the overpopulisation and commercialisation of Noosa. Try and find a car park at any of our local beaches. <laughs> <laughs> we have, you know, palm trees, hotel high-rises, pineapples, surfers. Um, but then we move to this last scene, and this is a dream and a hope and a vision for me for Australia, Aboriginal Australia, Migrant Australia, European Australia, to come together as one and hold hands and be together and move forward. And it's a lovely dream, and 
you're a little shy and you won't be a part of that by being here and being involved in some way today. So Lake Wyber in the Kabi language means stingray. We have, here's a centerpiece here, Dalangbara, the people of the Dalangbara in the Kabi language, that means the people of the Nautilus shell, one of the only places in the world it washes up on the beach. As I was saying earlier, that shell gets traded out to the desert and is a very expensive item because it shines and it glistens. Minbia, the turtle, so that's sort of the heads of Noosa as you can see there. The snake here represents uh, Mulu or Mululaba. It actually, Mulu means the red belly black snake. It actually means Mulu refers to anything red, so a snapper could also be called a Mulu because it was red. Um, it makes kind of a head of Noosa. Then we have the Barramundi, which very elusively we get in the Noosa River. Still have a cool one. Mullet, Willow or Dirawa. We've got Perigi in here. This is um, the emu, of course. Murray here, the kangaroo. Then we have, um, this is the uh, wood hen. I don't know his language name, sorry. Um, this one here is Karoi, the possum. We also have Lake Karoiba. This is a hinterland shield. And over here we have a um, Fraser Island Noosa shield, which was often used between the Butchelor and Ballinburra people. And then we have Mount Coulomb here, Mount Perigi in there. And we also have a shell midden here of the Ugaris or the Pippies, depending on if you're a Queenslander or a New South Welshman, or what you call. And yeah, that's, that's some of the story and some of the inspiration behind it. And I'm going to share a quick song with you and share the story of what I put together and happened.
Spears and what is all round. Darling, for a body is laid, slain on the ground. And all that was left was to weep about the battle of old murder and grief. And as you take a quiet walk in the
we remember the dispossession of the local first people. Remember that the land where we lived, that we, where we live now, that we regard as our own, was stolen from them at the time of the first settlement. And we are the beneficiaries of that process. We remember that the first people were systematically moved far away from their country by force, and that there were many massacres of which only one local one, the Murdering Creek Massacre, is remembered with any detail. We acknowledge information about this history was often hidden and actively forgotten, and that the first people suffer the ongoing effects of those events to this day. We are sorry for the injustices of the past and present but with respect to the first people. We stand in solidarity with them on their day of mourning and wish to be their allies in working for a more just future. Gracious God, hear our acknowledgement. We have not loved you with our whole heart, nor have we loved first peoples and other neighbours as ourselves. God of mercy, forgive us for our failures, past and present, and give us grace today to make a fresh start. By your spirit, transform our minds and our hearts so that we may love you as you loved us. That we may boldly speak your truth and courageously do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is the best of all. When we are empty, God fills us. When we are disheartened, God is compassionate. When we are wounded, God brings healing. When we confess our sins, God forgives. In Christ, through Christ, and because of Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. You refill the cup of life, O God. In Christ, we find refuge, strength, and hope.
Sunny to Pool to say, to tell the story or say what happened there, even if it was a pre tour of the site. And I think that this is a serious oversight which needs to be remedied. And so, Pura is raising funds um, to put a monument and a signage at the site, which is our action, I suppose. To be safe, sorry, it's going to be something. That's what we're trying to do. Um, if you wanted to make a donation um, for the monument, um, you could go to the easiest way to go to the Pura community Facebook page. Or you ask the yellow you can have to do it. Like me and Vic, check. I'm not allowed to be incompetent. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, God, God bless you and well done for um, observing that you know, morning. Thank you for inviting us along.
So we can thank Heather and John for, for that and permission to, to play it. So when was that song written, Heather? Three years ago. Three years ago? And it's, is it on YouTube already? <laughs> no? Oh, got to get out there. So I'd like to call upon Beverly to read scripture for us. Thanks, Beverly. <coughs> She's coming from a long way. So it's too silent for now. It's a short sermon today, folks, uh, obviously, because we've had a lot to fit in. Uh, and I, there's no PowerPoint. Actually, that's my PowerPoint right there. Actually, so that's it. I mean, I didn't want to add to the hundred that uh, Neil put up, okay? So I think we've had enough. So uh, let us pray. Father, I pray that you use my thoughts and my lips service of your word, in the name of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, on Tuesday, there was going to be a public holiday for Australia Day, which, as most of you will know, is commemorating that, that date on the 26th of January. 1788, when Captain Arthur Phillip arrived with a fleet of 11 British ships full of convicts to the colony of New South Wales, effectively founding Australia as a British colony. So eventually, after overcoming a period of hardship, the fledgling colony began to celebrate this day that is known as Australia Day. However, this date is not a special day for our First Peoples. It's a date that they mourn. Because that was the date when they had their country taken away from them. They lost their freedom, their hope, their way of life, and they lost many lives. I suggest that most of us have experienced mourning at some point of our lives for a variety of reasons. The mourning of a lost one, of a loved one, mourning the breakdown of a relationship, mourning the loss of a job, 
and other things. Many other things that we can mourn. But it's not very pleasant to mourn, is it? Mourning can be defined as an expression of grief or a time of grieving. And the time of grieving that, that follows serious loss. This can lead to depression, anxiety, even losing interest in hanging out with friends and family. This can all happen when someone is mourning. I remember when my father passed away back in 2015. It was unexpected. It was unexpected because he was only 67. And I remember having an overwhelming feeling of grief. In fact, it felt like he was stolen from me. I still mourn his passing. I don't forget him. I don't want to forget him. And I want to remember all the good things about him. The traditions that he had. You know, we shared many things. We still do because of Dad's legacy. The sayings he had, the sense of humour he had. If you ask me whether I'd like to celebrate the day he died, that particular date, I would definitely say no. So I can fully understand why our First Peoples wouldn't want to remember January 26 as a date that was a positive thing for them. It's a date that is synonymous with great hurt. Great hurt. As a church, we mourn with our first peoples. We understand that God wants us as Christians, the, the body of Christ, to be part of the healing process. We know that mourning acknowledges both the good and evil in this world. We know that intense suffering and loss and the mourning that follows reminds us of our crucified Lord who was rejected by mankind. He was familiar with pain. He was, one, he was the one that people turned away from. He was persecuted and despised, and despised by the establishment. Folks, we are wanting God to heal our land. We are called to be a blessing to all that suffer. And ultimately, it is God that will heal our nation and provide comfort to those who mourn. As Jesus said in Matthew 5 verse 4 in his Sermon on the Mount of the Beatitudes, he said, happy are those who mourn. God will comfort them. And in Isaiah 57, verse 18 to 19, God said, I have seen how they acted, but I will heal them. I will lead them and help them. And I will comfort those who mourn. I offer peace to all, both near and far, I will heal my people. In today's scripture reading from 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, the Lord said to King Solomon over 3,000 years ago, the dedication of the temple, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. So firstly, he's asking that we first humble ourselves before him. 
In 1 Peter 5, verse 5, it is written, All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favour to the humble. He is asking us to confess our sins to him. To think less of ourselves. To blame others less. In the context of the relationship between first and second peoples, I don't believe that it's right to say, it's not my fault, it's not my problem, I wasn't there, I didn't do it. It's important that we are humble enough to look within our hearts and remember what has happened in our past and remember that as it is written in Proverbs 28 verse 13 that you will never succeed in life if you try to hide your sins. Confess them and give them up. Then God will show mercy to you. It is vitally important not to cover up anyone else's sins of the past, folks. We are called to be a blessing to others and seek out justice for all that we can. All people. Secondly, God is asking us to pray and pray a lot. We are called to pray in a very sincere way to God. We must think and ask ourselves, what breaks our hearts? Do we pray for our nation? Do we pray for those that suffer as a result of someone else's sins? The Apostle Paul writes in his letter to the Ephesians 6 verse 18, do all this in prayer, asking for God's help. Pray on every occasion as the Spirit leads. For this reason, keep alert and never give up. Pray always for all of God's people. Then we need to seek God's face. What does that mean, to seek God's face? We seek his presence. The writer of Hebrews states in chapter 11, verse 6, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Meaning, we are to seek his presence in our lives. If we get to know the word of God more, we then get to know more of God's character. Therefore, we will get to know what God's will is in our lives and for his will in healing our land. Lastly, we need to turn away from our wicked ways. So we're called to turn back completely to God by sinning less. We all sin, some more than others, but we, we won't be the, the judges. <coughs> we must try to recognise our own sins first. Not play the blame game. That's not helpful. As Christians, as the body of Christ, we must lead the way. We are called to lead the way. I suspect that because we are Christians, because we do know God, God's word, God expects more from us. God wants us to be part of the solutions that will heal us and heal our land. God then says to Solomon, if we do these things, if we do these things, then he will hear from heaven 
and will forgive us our sins and heal our land. Friends, by following this small but very powerful text, we can play our part in healing our land, our lives. Our country that is shared with the first and second peoples. We can help heal the hearts of those that suffer. The hearts that ache on this day of mourning. That are going to ache again on January 26th. We know that hope, healing and reconciliation for our nation is ultimately found in Christ. As I finish, remember, whatever you're mourning, you can take comfort in knowing that God is with you, is with you in your mourning, or whatever you're mourning. He's there. So this text, another little bit of text here as I finish from Ecclesiastes 3 verse 4. It is written, He, God, sets the time for sorrow and the time for joy, the time for mourning and the time for dancing. Note that it is written that there is a time for dancing, for great joy. God wants us to be joyful. He wants us to be joyful and dance. But he wants us to dance with the first peoples. So God bless you, friends. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the Uniting Church of Australia's commitment to working together as first and second peoples. We thank you for the first peoples and for their spirituality that they have practiced for thousands of years. We pray that you heal our land of racism. We pray that more people walk humbly with you in order that we continue as a nation to acknowledge our full history and the ongoing impacts on our First Peoples. We pray that your healing and comforting hand is felt on all that mourn. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I would like to call that man John up again <laughs> to, to sing uh, another song. Rejoice, rejoice for the healing of the land. Amen. I wish you not to rejoice this morning because we are in a land of milk and honey. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> We've been blessed being here in Australia. Uh, like some of the places like Rain and Solomon, oh man, you don't see a lot of things around you. But in here, I've been seeing so many blessings in here. And I was so excited because God blessed this country. So we should be rejoice for this. And we should not take it in granted that we should exalt God for his goodness for us. Rejoice! Rejoice! For the healing of the land, we shout, we sing, we dance, we clap our hands, we wear.
Praise of the people. Let us pray. God of justice and peace, give us the courage to accept the realities of our history so that we may build a better future for our nation. Teach us to respect all cultures. Teach us to care for our land and waters. Help us to share justly the resources of this land. Lord, hear our prayer. God of hope and healing, help us to bring about spiritual and social change to improve the quality of life for all peoples in our communities, especially the disadvantaged. May all young people find true dignity and self-esteem by your spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. May your power and love be the foundations on which we walk together as first and second peoples and on which we build our families, our communities and our nation. Through, Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the Our Father together. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, our next song is quite uh, apt, I think. Bind us together, Lord. Please be upstanding. challenge injustice wherever you see it. Act justly yourselves and insist that others do the same. Rejoice in the richness of our diverse cultures and learn from them. Celebrate and demonstrate the unity we share in Jesus our Lord. Commit to worship, witness and serve as one people under God until God's promised reconciliation of all creation is complete. Bless us as, as we leave this place. Give us a generous spirit, a kind heart, and the grace to walk alongside our first peoples as brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Go in the power of God's good spirit with the gentle fire of God's zeal with the breath of life, ready to work for justice and peace. We go in Christ's name. Amen. Let's be for the presence of His glory with exceeding. 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Peace be with you, friends. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Have a great week, everybody. Bless you. There's a cup of tea or coffee and going for it in the hall and all the side of our store will be on the If you're going for one, you'll be copied your and that's going to and happy. Oh, nice. Thank you. Bless you all.